We all know that DNA is smart and has its own way of making multiple copies of itself. But have you ever wondered about how DNA begins to replicate itself? Does it happen magically? Back then, a league of researchers teamed up to study how DNA came about synthesizing a new strand of DNA. They studied three different types of viruses that infect Acerotia coli, namely bacteriophages M13, 5X174, and G4. The aim of their study was to figure out how these phages take advantage of the E. coli machinery to replicate their DNA. They first looked at how M13 DNA was replicated in E. coli by adding in an antibiotic called rifampicin, which is currently a household name in the world of tuberculosis drugs. It turns out that the replication was inhibited by the drug. They then concluded that RNA polymerase, an enzyme whose action can be inhibited by rifampicin, was required to initiate the replication of M13 DNA. Then, they also studied the same thing on 5X174 DNA. Much to their surprise, the replication was not inhibited by rifampicin, unlike in M13. Then, they went on to their last phage, which was phage G4. It turned out that phage G4 was similar to 5X174 in that the replication was not inhibited by rifampicin. They also learned that the replication of phage G4 DNA has a much simpler requirements, as it needed only a band of three enzymes to get to work. These enzymes are the DNA unwinding protein, a DNA polymerase 3 holoenzyme, and another mysterious protein. This enigmatic protein is thought to be the rifampicin resistant replication initiating, aka the priming protein. They went on to study this peculiar protein a bit more. After getting a close look at it, the researchers decided that this enigmatic protein was a product of the gene DNAG and that it showed RNA polymerase activity. Hey, what does that mean? It means that this protein was able to synthesize a fragment of RNA that can later be extended by DNA polymerase 3 holoenzyme to form a new complementary DNA strand. It was a bit puzzling for them, because although it has similar activity to RNA polymerase in that it synthesizes RNA fragments, this protein is resistant to rifampicin. So for now, they decided to name it rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase. But isn't that name a mouthful? Besides, the researchers weren't quite satisfied enough with their findings, so they put their lab coat back on and went into the lab to study this rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase again. They infected their pet E. coli with heaps of phage G4, grew up the lot, and extracted their DNA. They also purified the rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase from the cells to test for its activity. First, they tested to see how important it is in synthesizing DNA. They mixed in a bunch of chemicals required for DNA synthesis. When they left out rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase of the mix, only a tiny bit of DNA was synthesized. They came to the conclusion that the replication of G4 DNA depends on the addition of this rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase. Other than that, they also wanted to know the RNA synthesis activity of this protein. They compared the rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase with the good old rifampicin-sensitive RNA polymerase holoenzyme by putting each of them against the most famous RNA polymerase inhibitors, such as rifampicin, heparin, and axinomycin D. It turns out that rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase was not inhibited by those inhibitors, except actinomycin D. They also tested to see how well rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase is at transcribing DNA template of different phages and making its complementary RNA strand. The researchers were delighted to see that rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase was only able to synthesize a short RNA fragment out of the DNA of a phage G4. In comparison, the RNA polymerase holoenzyme was able to synthesize long RNA fragments out of the DNA of various phages. This proved that the rifampicin-resistant RNA polymerase only acts to synthesize what is now known as RNA prima, rather than transcribing the whole DNA strand to synthesize its complementary RNA strand. Due to this fact, the League of Researchers agreed to change the protein's name into a rather simple one, primase. Later on, the researchers moved on from working with prokaryotes to the eukaryotes, the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster to be exact. Here, they found that primates and eukaryotes worked together with another enzyme called DNA polymerase alpha. Recently, a subunit enzyme consisting of primates and DNA polymerase called primpol was studied in regards with human cancer. 
The researchers found that odd pimple activity in DNA replication might lead to cancer development. This finding opened up a new avenue of cancer research in terms of development for novel biomarkers, as well as targets for cancer therapeutics. Hence, we can say that the discovery of primates was quite a pivotal advancement in molecular biology, as well as genetics, and beyond. Through this, we now recognize primates as the one to initiate DNA synthesis, the start of it all.